Australia. Guys, you know Australia's a big, beautiful, vast expanse. And also, I've read and heard multiple times, Australia is arguably the driest continent on Earth. We know the outback. You see the maps. You see the Google Earth. Australia is humongous, and so much of it looks red and orange. Looks like a big, dry desert. Of course, most of the central part of the continent is dominated by that landscape. Well, we're looking at a video called uh, How Australia is Regreening Its Deserts Back into a Green Oasis. Sounds pretty interesting. Uh, this is from a channel called Leaf of Life. There's a link in the description down below. So you can watch the whole thing uninterrupted and check them out. Alrighty, guys. Let's waste no more time. Let's find out what this is about. Here we go. Australia is the driest inhabited continent on planet Earth, and it is home to the Great Australian Desert, which is the fourth largest desert in the world, after the Antarctic, the Arctic, and the Sahara. Wow. Australia is compared. Yeah, I um I didn't know until a couple years ago. It's weird how the Arctic and the Antarctic. I said that so wrong. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, those are deserts. Pretty interesting, but it actually makes perfect sense. Of course, everyone knows the mighty Sahara. Uh, I know there's multiple deserts. Uh, the Great Australian Desert, as she mentioned. The Simpson Desert, I believe that's in Australia. I can't remember the other ones right now. It's top of my head. Uh, here's all the deserts. There's 10 of them. Wow. The Great Victoria Desert, the Great Sandy Desert, the Tanami Desert, the Simpson Desert, the Gibson Desert, the Little Sandy Desert, the whatever that is, desert, <laughs> and the Stuart Stoney Desert. Oh, and there's more. But uh, look at the size, by the way, the Great Victoria Desert. Absolutely huge. 348,750 square kilometers. Wow. Sorry, back on track. The United States. However, its population is significantly less than America's. Right. The whole of Australia has about the same number of people living in it as the state of Texas. <sighs> Despite the low population, Australia is one of the worst developed countries in the world for broad-scale deforestation, oh. wiping out endangered forests and woodlands. In fact, they have cleared nearly half of all forest cover in the last 200 years. It what? Nearly half? All right. Well, I did not know that. I actually would not have figured that. I imagine, uh, without being like political and stuff, I imagine most people probably aren't happy about that. But uh, what can you do, right? I'm not sure who's in charge of doing all that. Maybe government, maybe something else. But uh, yikes, that's a lot of deforestation. began around the early 1800s when the British colonized Australia in search of land and fortunes. At that time, Britain had already been completely stripped of trees for centuries wow. by intensive agriculture and war. Even today, the United Kingdom has one of the lowest percentages of forest cover in Europe. Yeah, they did. Uh, I think they stripped a lot of Ireland of trees too, right? British timber companies Jeez. were granted free access to vast know. areas of virgin forest in Australia, and trees were felled for agriculture and railway tracks, which were constructed alongside other transit infrastructure, such as roads, bridges, and jetties. By the 1880s, concerns about stripping the forest... Okay, intact, pre-1800, today. Wow, that's a lot of red and orange which means degraded for orange, cleared in red. Uh, wow. Lots of uh, area up here on the central east coast, most of that being Queensland, I believe, maybe part of New South Wales, and then, of course, way down here. Wow. Wow, that's uh, that's staggering. I, I honestly would not, um, would, have, would not have guessed that. ...risks were being raised, but no steps towards conservation were taken. And now... Australia has become the worst offending country in the world for mammal extinctions. 55 oh, no. wildlife species plus 37 plant species have gone extinct. The widespread deforestation has resulted in 55% of all Australian land area being used for agricultural purposes. And around 72% of all agricultural output is exported. Meat and live animals has been the fastest growing export segment, growing 33% in value. However, wow. agriculture only accounts for 1.9% of the value added GDP. GDP and 2.5% of all employment in 2020 and 2021. The wow. widespread land degradation has resulted in man-made desertification after centuries of tilling and the introduction of non-native grasses has taken its toll on the landscape. However, some regions in Australia are starting to turn this around, Good. transforming large areas of degraded land back into biodiverse ecosystems. I mean, not good that it's come to this. If the damage is already done, which is horrible, uh, at least 
good that any regreening going on needs to be done. So uh, that's good to hear. By restoring millions of trees and in turn improving the lives of rural farming communities, as well as capturing over a million tons of carbon to benefit the planet as a whole, this can be considered a major accomplishment for any country, particularly one that has a low average rainfall of 16 inches per year. In this video, we will... Now, I know different regions are different. I'm sure the outback still isn't very rainy. I'm sure, you know, parts of uh, wherever it is usually dry is still usually pretty dry. But I have heard from a lot of viewers, a lot of people on Discord, a lot of people in the comments uh, that um, you guys are in La Nina, correct? So uh, I have heard in most of, the, that's to say the uh, population centers, I've heard it's been really, really rainy uh, for like a year or two, hasn't it? That's kind of interesting, right? That's just um, not what I've usually always heard uh, until lately. So that's weird. I wonder when that will end. Just kind of a side note. I think that's kind of interesting. And uh, I imagine people are probably <laughs> sick of the rain a little bit uh, for the most part, right? I mean, we're dealing with a lot of flooding. Uh, not to mention, even if it's not flooding, it's just a lot of cold, rainy days. I'm sure some Aussies want some, uh, some more sunshine. We'll show you Go how spring. a 200 kilometer long green corridor will connect 12 nature reserves across 10,000 square kilometers. So stick with us as we dive into today's video. This large scale reforestation project is in one of Australia's most vulnerable regions. Nearly 20 million trees across 10,000 hectares of degraded farmland have been planted, transforming barren areas of parched earth into forests rich in biodiversity. Carbon Neutral is a biodiverse carbon sink developer working on some of Australia's largest reforestation projects. Good. This project is part of the Yarra Yarra Biodiversity Corridor. In and hopefully these are uh, like native plants, right? I would assume. Western Australia's Midwest, connecting vital areas of land in the Yarra Yarra Biodiversity Corridor. Biodiversity corridors are areas of vegetation that allow animals to travel from one patch of native forest to another. A corridor provides shelter, food and protection for many predators by imitating the structure and diversity of native vegetation. Good. The forests yeah. contain 30 to 50 different native species. Awesome. All of the seeds are collected from within 20 kilometers of the project area, ensuring they are located and adapted to the area helping to restore the native biodiversity. Soil types across the project areas have been analyzed, so suitable species could be selected for planting. It reclaims a lot of salt land and is helping to prevent wind and water erosion, as well as providing significant habitat for flora and fauna, including some of Australia's rare and endangered species, like the nally fowl and the huh. Carnaby black cockatoo. Ooh. The project aims to employ local indigenous people fella. and is currently providing jobs for 10 people. Work includes helping with sea collection, fencing, land management, and working with traditional landowners throughout the region. 80 local businesses are involved, and the project has cost 4 million Australian dollars. The project is situated in Western Australia's Wheat Belt, an area cleared for agricultural land, and intensive farming has caused erosion and degradation of the soil, devastating Jeez. native ecosystems and habitats oh, no. for wildlife. Over the last century, over 90% of the land has been cleared, which wow. has resulted in a loss of biodiversity and Jeez, salinity has man. also been an issue in the valleys. However, <sighs> tree planting has become a catalyst for life and bringing biodiversity back to the system, which is helping the region immensely. Repl I mean, come on, right? Uh, I'm glad they're stepping in the right direction, at least. I hope it continues to grow in a better direction because, man, look at all those beautiful colors, the vegetation, uh, the wildlife, uh, you know, hopefully on their way to... Uh, flourishing and, and having a better day-to-day -day environment, Planting native right? species that were previously on the land is now helping to out, sequester man. carbon, generating oxygen, and recreating the ecosystem. Deforestation is a major cause of global greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah. Native forests reduce temperatures by creating shade. Yeah, uh, that's one thing I've learned recently, too, living somewhere really hot and uh, hearing about it all the time down there. Uh, all these initiatives, uh, like in our southern states especially our southwest the deserts where it's extremely hot there's all these initiatives uh they're trying to plant more more and more trees especially in cities and uh in parks and all these things because yeah trees are kind of everything man you need a lot of greenery a lot of trees when you can within reason in deserts right uh especially in population places <laughs> which are questionable right when you have big population centers in a dry desert that's really hot but that aside 
um, people that live in hot climates, you just need the, you need the trees, you need the shade. And if you have all these trees in one area, it has you know been shown to reduce the temperature by uh, a measurable amount, right? Being moisture in the water table. Returning That's our native true. forests uh, throughout too, the world yeah. is a vital step to restoring biodiversity, lowering local surface temperatures, and restoring the aquifers. In part two of our Australian Regreening oh, the Desert wow. series, we will okay. cover how community-led projects are helping farmers to radically transform their farming practices to become more sustainable, resilient, and profitable. Last mention, you know me, I always analyze random things. Th what is this? This is an interesting looking vegetation he's grabbing. These little, I don't know if they're trees or considered like bushes. They're interesting. They're like, um, they're hairy looking, right? They're kind of cool. They look soft. They might be prickly and hard. I'm not really sure. But he's touching them, so I imagine they're, they're semi-soft. Uh, interesting. Uh, the outback, Australia as a whole, it's just so different, right? And it, I, I always think it's very fascinating between the wildlife, the vegetation, the landscapes, the colors. And uh, I hope... That regreening as deserts into a green oasis keeps happening. That that's cool, right? Uh, they can start swinging that pendulum in the right direction, right? Because uh, we're talking about def deforestation on such a big scale, uh, like in some places, like ninety percent or or seventy five percent or whatever. That that's uh that's pretty steep. That's pretty steep. So let me know your thoughts down below on this one. And uh, I actually know I've watched a video in the past about like Sydney suburbs uh, have gotten really hot, right? With all the growth and all the neighborhoods that pop up and stuff. And, uh, you know, a lot of the newer developments don't have a lot of trees. And that's the exact same problem that we have here uh, in parts of the United States, too, where you have all this population growth and all these brand new subdivisions being put up. And there's, there's just like no greenery, right? And it's just so like hot. So, yeah, some of this we can definitely relate on uh, for sure between our two countries. But in closing, guys, make sure to check out the description. Uh, so you can watch that whole video and check out their channel. Of course, you can throw a like or a thumbs up on this video. It will help it out. I do appreciate it. Subscribe to join this amazing community we have. It's been growing really good lately, guys. Let's keep it up. With that being said, y'all, my name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. And until next time, we'll catch you later.